Before we foreign investors came up with their promissory notes, but that doesn't help our cash flow problem. So you're saying we're between a rock and a hard place. I never should have given up control of Corey Publishing. Are you saying you think Carl took the money? I'm saying I never should have given up Corey Publishing. Oh, glad you're back, Mom. Don't get too excited. I never thought that this company would be in jeopardy, much less our family. Hey, hey, hey. We're gonna be okay. It's not just the money, it's everything. I don't want you to marry that woman. Hey, look, I am marrying that woman to ensure my legal rights as a father. I'm not certain that that's gonna happen that way. Well, it is. That's what Tyrone told me. Well, I'm gonna go over and see Cass later. I'm gonna ask him. All right, look, listen. I know this is a little embarrassing for you. Matthew, it's not about the embarrassment. I'm worried about you. Lila wants to marry a rich person. You tell her you're not rich. Hey, 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 whoa, 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 hey. We just talked about this. I haven't told Lila about the money, and I'm not going to. Okay, yes. Uh, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, wake up. <laughs> uh. <sighs> Oh, what are you doing back? The last I recall, you exited laughing hysterically. Well, you know, I'm back because I realized that uh, you must have been joking. Oh, I'm a real kidder, all right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it was mean of you to imply what you implied, even if you were fooling around. A time out. I kid, yes, but I never fool around anymore. What are we talking about, anyway? Well... You know, you're telling me that Matt's family is broke. I mean, that's not funny. They're not laughing, I can assure you. Oh, Cass, come on, it's not true. If you're marrying Matt for his money, honey, you're in for a real big letdown. Because the Corys are flat broke. That Andre must have gotten to your head. Because it's not true. It just can't be. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, God. I can't even... Fire department's on the way. Good. Come on. Oh, right now. Come on. I'm okay. I just... I can't believe it. I mean, the, the ceiling fell in. God, Remy, if you hadn't dragged me out of there when you did, I... I I'm, I'm glad I was here. Where's oh, the kitchen, ma'am? It's through there. It's through there. Thank you. Oh, I got a 911. Are you guys okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The kitchen fell in. Uh, you okay? Yeah, we're okay. No, just... just should I get everyone out of here? No, no, they're fine. Uh, the damage is pretty localized. <laughs> well, I thought there was a flood upstairs. Well, the water probably leaked through the floorboards and rotted out your ceiling. Come on, boys, let's clean this mess up. I am so, I'm still shaking. Sometimes I have Dante in the kitchen with me. Remy, Remy, how am I ever going to thank you? Remy, how did you know to go in there at that precise moment? Oh, uh, um, I, I heard this creaking noise. I didn't hear it. No, neither did I. I, I have these supercharged ears. Come on. No, yeah. Ever since I was a little kid, you, it, what's weird is that um, the dining room ceiling fell in, in one of the foster homes I was in, and it, it made kind of the same sort of creaking noise. So when I heard the sound, I, I didn't even think. I just sort of started screaming my head off. The waitress job, it's yours for life. Thanks. Come on, let's see if we can get the firemen some coffee. What's the matter? You didn't just hear a creaking sound. Yeah, I did. Remy, don't you remember? We were talking just before the ceiling fell in, and you said your whole world's collapsed. standing right by the counter and you said your whole world's collapsing then you got this look in your eyes and you were in that kitchen so fast i'm sure you left some skid marks on the linoleum you knew something bad was going to happen didn't you big mistake coming to bay city i knew i'd be headed for trouble but it came anyway pretty dumb huh never thought i'd meet a girl like amanda though she is one stubborn broad. She could never take no for an answer. But I said it straight. I let her go. She's probably getting that note right now. It's probably all over. 
Hey, what's this? Give me that. What we had was good, but it's over between us? Think about the rest of your life and the rest of the people in your life. Well, now I know where I stand. I'm one of the other people in your life. I asked you not to read that. And all this time, I felt guilty about leaving you home alone. Well, you made real good use of that Gary, time, didn't no, you? please, don't be stupid, okay? This is not what it looks like. You can't argue with black and white. Who is he, Josie? Who's your lover? Gary, you're the one spending all your nights with Cindy Harrison. Don't put this on me. That was a job. This is no job. You don't even know who that is from. Hey, the only way I would know is if you told me, but How you're not telling I me tell anything you anymore. Anything when you, I don't even see you anymore. Then who wrote the note then? It's not even written to me, okay? It's written to somebody else. You got a problem with Detective Sinclair? You want to make an accusation? You better be damn sure you got something to back it up. Keep that in mind, Captain. Proof. What's wrong? What did Josie do? He just seems untrustworthy, that's all. I know that she can have an attitude, but she's pretty straightforward. Well, look, if you want me to drop it, then I will, but a warning. Truth has a way of coming out. The truth about what? And Josie Sinclair and Cameron. Ordinarily, what Cameron and Sinclair do behind closed doors is nobody's business but their own. And her husband's, of course. You really think they're involved? You know, most accused men who try to skip town get their bail revoked. Not Cameron. Josie Sinclair keeps going to bat for him. I don't think she's going to bat for him. You were the one who was just dragged in there for questioning. I was. And I wish that I'd gotten the consideration that he has. I'm sorry that you've been dragged into all this. No, look, it's, it's not your fault. I'm new here, so, you know, nobody knows me. I know you. I know you can never be involved in anything criminal. Hmm. But you seem more upset about Josie and Cameron. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm worried that Josie could be with someone as dangerous as Cameron. You're carrying around a note to someone else. That's right. What is this, high school? No. Then tell me who wrote the note then. I can't tell you, just like you couldn't tell me where you hid Cindy Harrison. That's not the same thing. Yes, Gary, it is the same thing. Except one thing. When I make a promise to you, I keep that promise to you. I had every intention of bringing Cindy in, and you know that. Yeah, well, what happened? Well, tell me who wrote the note first. Frank Cameron, you satisfied? Kim again. What are you talking about? I'm talking about every time I turn around, it's him. This Frank Cameron is Gary, in my life. You know what? Say this for when we get home. Yeah, I agree. You're on duty, Josie. Yes, sir. People can hear you two all the way down the hall. Sorry, Joe. Thank you, Gary. This is not about Cindy Harrison. Our problem started when you got back from Quantico. What is wrong with us has nothing to do with my job. That's when the secret started. Oh, you're a fine one to talk about secrets, Gary. What are you talking about? You! Pulling away from me! Instead of trying to talk, you know? Instead, you're just jumping in bed, thinking that fixes things. Sure as hell felt better. Well, you know what? It doesn't work anymore. So what are we going to do? She's a gold digger, Matthew. I'd be willing to bet good money that she engineered this whole pregnancy just to get a financial claim on you. You remove that incentive, and she's going to just disappear. When she disappears, she's going to disappear with my kid. You don't know that. And in the meantime, you've lost Sophia. Look, look, Mom, I am not going to give up on Sophia, but the wedding to Lila is on. You're going to make me get used to the fact that that lady is going to be part of this family? Temporarily. 
Just until I prove that I am a fit father. Then I will work on getting custody. And you really think you're gonna win this in court? Look, Lila's gonna hate being a mother. Boiled bananas and 2 a.m. feedings? You don't know that. She might take to this like a duck to water. I know, Lila. She's too selfish. Just for argument's sake. Suppose she does take to motherhood. Suppose she's really good at it. No court in the world is going to take that baby away from her. You wouldn't want to take the baby away from her. Where are you? You're stuck with no more claim to that child than you have now. Alimony payments and no Sophia. Well, it's a chance I'm going to have to take. Maybe it won't last that long. Oh. Once Lila finds out she's not queen of the manor, she'll file for divorce. I can almost bet on it. Oh, come on. The Coreys are one of the richest families in the country. My might think they're just vanish overnight like that. Lila. I mean, they've got stocks and bonds and treasury notes, and not to mention all those paintings they have. It, it, they must be worth a fortune. And the chandeliers, they must come from some chateau in France. The Corey's poor. Ha! Imagine that. I mean, it's simply not true. You're right, Lila. You're right about everything. I only told you that the Corey's were broke to try to save people that I care about the grief of welcoming you into their family. <laughs> so relieved. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I knew it wasn't true. No use trying to kid a girl like you. I mean, you're much too savvy for me. The thought of Rachel Corey poor. I mean, the thought, it's almost, it's almost funny, you know? <laughs> <I mean. laughs> it's a real knee slapper. <sighs> oh, I'm so relieved. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you know, it's not that I care about money or anything, you know. You understand. Oh, oh, I understand in spades. Mm. <clears throat> You know what really would have been funny, though? Mm, what? What if I had been telling you the truth? And you didn't find out until after you said I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why would I want to imagine something like that? I mean, that's not going to happen. That's a good thing, huh? I mean, think of it. There you'd be, a baby, a husband who doesn't love you, chili and beer every night. And, of course, we know that you were born for caviar and champagne. No, no, it's a, it's a good thing that you'll never have to face that. Huh. Lila. I know how you feel, boy. You can't just sit around here waiting for Guthrie to make his next move. What do you want? Looks like I'm just in time. Where are you going? I said, what do you want? Well, I have good news for you. Police don't have enough evidence to charge you with Cass Winthrop's assault. <laughs> Guthrie's gonna pound. All that time he spent setting me up and planting that glove, and it didn't work. Yeah, not this time it didn't. What's that supposed to mean? It means be smart, stay put, and stay out of trouble. Stay put? Yeah, you almost had your bail revoked a couple of times. That's because Guthrie keeps setting me up. Okay, relax, relax. I believe you. Obviously, this guy's got an end for you. He's the one who shot Hutchins, Tyrone, I'm telling you. And he set me up to take the rap. All right, well, the only way to make him pay is to keep your nose clean. All right? Must be nice being a button-down lawyer with all the answers. Actually, it is. But do you want me to continue working for you? Uh... Yeah. All right, then those are my terms. You stay on the right side of the law, I represent you. Now, you take the law into your own hands. You're on your own. Guthrie's the one's playing dirty. What am I supposed to do? Just sit around here and wait for him to make his next move? Yeah, that's right. You let the police handle it. It's their job, not yours. Yeah. Yeah. I had to talk to you. Amanda. He's up to something. Who, Guthrie? Amanda. I, I just was talking to my mom. Oh. Is she back from England? Yes, she is, but we didn't get to talk for very long. So I want to find out what the news is. I hope it's good about business. Oh, me too. Mr. Guthrie. Looks like we're gonna have a few more questions for you. Well, I'm not going anywhere. Good. Carlino here. Carlino here, too. Hey, blue eyes. Listen, uh, can this wait? Um, I'm in the middle of something here. 
Not really. I mean, it's all under control, but... What's under control? Did Dante is here, right? What happened? No, no, no. Dante's fine. He's with the sitter. We're all fine, in fact. It's just there's been an accident at the restaurant. What kind of an accident? Is Pauline all right? In the kitchen. With the stove again? Now this time, it was the kitchen ceiling. What happened to the ceiling? It's not there. Uh, you know what? Uh, okay, um, hang on. I'll, I'll be right over there, all right? Paulina, Paulina, listen, uh, call the insurance company. Right. Problem at the restaurant. I gotta check it out. I'll go with you. Uh, why do you have to go? Grow up. Paulina's my sister. She might need me. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't I go too? I mean, after everything you've been through, you shouldn't be alone. Come. Okay, so maybe I'm not the, uh, the model husband. I tried to talk to you, Gary. So my life's supposed to be an open book, huh? But for months now, I've dealt with phone calls, overtime, trips out of town that can't be explained. I told you that was my job. I've already explained all of this to you. I'm beginning to think that there is no job. That those phone calls, that overtime, those trips, that beeper, those flowers are all about that guy who wrote that note that's in your pocket right now. You know what? I don't want to get into this right now. I have a job okay. to do. Thank yeah. you. Sure. Well, let's just talk at home, okay? Fine. Good. So when can you be there? I don't know. Okay, of course. Of course not. I mean, what's home? Home's just, uh, just a place where you crash when you're not working. I did. It was no big deal. I've got your story right here, Chris. Right, Remy, right. Remy, Remy, you know Remy, right? Remy, here. yes. Gumbo all over my paisley tie. That was you, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. That was my first day. I'm less better now. She's a hero now. Oh, yeah? What'd mm -hmm. you do? The ceiling in the kitchen fell in, and it would have fallen right on my head if it hadn't been for Remy. She pulled me out just in time. It was like a miracle, I swear to God. No, any, anybody could have done it. It was no big deal. No, uh, I don't think that's mm -mm. necessarily true. Uh, what do you mean? Well, apparently, Remy heard something that the none of us heard. Oh, really? You know how some people have 20-20 eyes? Yes. So what, you have 20-20 hearing? Well, lucky for me. <laughs> Waitress with superhero hearing saves boss from disaster. <laughs> Get out of here. Good work. I'll tell you what. Why don't we do a background on you and see what happens? So where were you, uh... Spilling soup before you came to Bay City. You know, I have to go. Now? Yeah. I, I was out all night, you know, typing those pages for Miss Galan. I'm beat. So, can I call you or something? I mean, we don't get that many heroes around here anymore. Sure. Yeah. Remy. You just lied to get out of there. I, I don't want to be in the paper. Why not? Because what I did, it was no big deal. I think it was. <sighs> How did you know? And don't tell me you didn't, because I was in there with you. It was like you heard something. Like that whistle only dogs can hear. <laughs> I really love that comparison. Remy, come on, you knew there was going to be an accident. That's why you went in there after Paulina. And you knew it before it happened. Are you psychic? <laughs> I guess. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know where you are anymore, Sophia. I guess I'm gonna have to get used to that. Hey, hey, how are you, Tyrone? Did you bring that? Uh, prenuptial agreement? I got it right here. Oh, terrific, thank you. Uh, listen, man, if I'm stepping over the line, just tell me to butt out, but, uh... No, go ahead. Well, you sure you want to go through with this? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, well, you know, I know Lila's a pretty lady and everything, but... She doesn't... She doesn't seem like she's your type. Look, I'm marrying Lila so my child can have a father. I mean, you gave me the well, idea. For me? Yeah, you said I'd have greater rights as a father if I was Lila's husband. Yeah, yeah, Matt, I said it was a possibility. 
Now, taking responsibility for your child, I mean, that's, that's great. But, you know, I never knew my father. Well, then you understand. Yeah, but on the other hand, my mother gave me a loving home. I had everything I needed. Yes, but if you had two parents... Th then it could have been worse, if they hated each other. All right, what do you suggest? All right, well, I'll look for some precedents. There might be another way to go after what you want. Look, I can't wait any longer. I gotta get Lila to the altar before she finds out my family's broke. Maybe tomorrow. So, you must have been a little worried about the money. You came back. Uh, I came back to ask you to give me away at my wedding. I'll give you away, but will you stay away? No more jokes, all or right? Or you come crawling back, babe in arms, hungry, penniless. You are an awful, awful man. With nothing more than the Corey name to show for your manipulations and treachery. You're gonna be the one coming to me asking for my forgiveness. For what? For being so disrespectful to me. <coughs> man, I'm gonna be so far above you that I can't even see you because I am gonna be up in the house on the hill, on top of the world. Air's a little thin up there. You really think you can climb that high? No more put-downs or ultimatums from old lady Corey. Old Lady Corey? <laughs> you, you don't mean Rachel. I most certainly do. Because <laughs> I'm going to be the new Mrs. Corey. I'm going to be giving parties and giving orders, and Miss Rachel is going to have a thing to say about it. <laughs> Go on and laugh if you want. Bust a gut. I'm going to have a last laugh. Oh, I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> You're too late. Tyrone already gave me the good news. I'm off the hook with the winter for salt. For now? Yeah, until Guthrie nails me with something else. But until then, we'll be one step ahead of him. You will be, maybe. Um, I'm gonna be off the case. What? I, I, I thought Carlino gave you free reign to, to investigate Guthrie. He did. He did. It's me. I want out. Why? I just do. That's all. Let me guess. Your husband's got you in a squeeze play. Your marriage or your job. Look, let's not drag Gary into this, okay? I, he arrested you, and I don't think you can be very objective about this. I'm right, aren't I? He's real open. He's real forgiving till it comes close to home. Then he turns on you. You asked me not to say anything to Gary about you, so I didn't. Gary doesn't trust you, so I'm on my own now. It's me against Guthrie, and whoever's pulling his strings. I can't keep secrets from Gary anymore. In order to keep a secret, you need to lie. And my marriage can't take any more lies. Life's tough, Josie. And then you die. Yeah. Yes, I'm out of here. I, I'm sorry. But it's over. No, it's not. We got unfinished business. You and me. Oh, man. Oh, so the insurance company says we're covered. All right, then we're, we're doubly lucky because you weren't in there when it collapsed. Well, you find out how that happened. Yeah, and I want to find out all about it. That means now, not right. later. I'm gonna go check out the damage. Okay, right. let me show you where I No, 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 no. The guys can show me. All right, I feel much better with you out here rather than in there. All right? Uh, okay. Still raining plaster in here or what? It's nice to see a man so in love with his wife. Yeah, they got it good, all right. Yeah, well, so do we. We're working on it. Working on it? <laughs> Is that what you call last night, work? <laughs> Anybody for coffee? Could be the last pop from Carlino's until the ceiling's repaired. I don't think they're hearing you. You right just, there. Can you sure there's nothing I can do? I, I think, well, no. No. <laughs> All right. Have a dirty grape. <laughs> no, thanks. Oh, jeez. Hey, Amanda? Yeah? You got a minute? No? Out here. <sighs> okay. I ran the background report on that guy. What'd you find? Nothing. He doesn't exist. He has a criminal record. There's got to be a way that you can find him. 
I ran the name Frank Cameron every which way. Came up empty. There's gotta be a mistake. We got one shot left, fingerprints. Now, are you close enough with this guy you can lift the set off? Uh, I can give it a shot, yeah. Okay. Hey. What? You. You look like somebody just died. Why? It's blue with Josie, that's all. Well, you guys will make up. I don't think so. Well, why don't you take the night off and just go show her that you love her? Do it for me. Out of time. Not if you love someone. Yeah, right. Scott, I, I'm gonna head home, actually. All and, right. Um, All right. Go talk to my mom. Good. You don't need to come with me. Uh, I can, uh, I can get home on my own. Great. Then I was gonna have some of your sister's famous coffee anyway. Okay. Here, knock yourself out. Bye, honey. It's it's on the house. Here you go. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, uh, Paulina. I almost forgot. Got something here. Uh, could you give this to your husband? This uh, bracelet. Someone might report it stolen. Hey, I think I've seen this before. It's Josie's. I gave it to her. Oh, okay, then here, you take it. Listen, I'm, I'm gonna poke my head in the kitchen and see how bad things are. Well, thanks again. Sure, anytime. Where did you, uh, find my wife's bracelet? Oh, boy, I think maybe you should ask her that. Hey, I'm not playing with you. Now I'm gonna ask you one more time. Where did you find my wife's bracelet? All right, all right fine. Um, I found it outside the apartment of a guy named, uh, Frank Cameron. There's nothing else between me and you? There's a note I gave her. For Amanda. Did she, uh... What'd she say when she got it? A note. Yeah, what happened? That's why Gary and I got fighting. We thought it was from a guy that was breaking it off with me. So, she, she never got it? No. No, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's, uh, it's probably for the best. The note, it said so much anyway. Look, Cameron, Amanda Corey isn't the most favorite person in the world to me, but don't leave her hanging. Be honest. Like Gary? Yeah, I wish. You know, I... Holds back for me. I wish he would just talk to me. Maybe I could help him. But instead, he. I don't know. It's something in his past. Something bad happened in his past. You're like that too, aren't you? You and Gary, you guys are a lot alike. Hate to burst your bubble, but you're not Mrs. Corey yet. Well, just speak to Matthew. It's only going to be a matter of time. Well, he feels he has no choice, so you have won this battle. Oh, it's not a battle. It's a love story. You know something? You look real nice in that color. Maybe you should find a dress in that color for our wedding. You know, a shirt like this must cost an arm and a leg. Not that you have to worry about money. Mm. Welcome home. Why do I feel like I need your bed more than you do? Lila's the one that's going to need reviving when she finds out that she's marrying into a family with no money. Oh, just forgive me for not finding that a lap, Ryan. I'm sorry. She's going to ruin Matthew's life, and I've tried to convince him of that, but he's determined. I, I mean, it's not exactly something I asked for, you know? But you're stuck with it. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's going to last forever. I'll be walking down the street, it'll be an ordinary day, and then suddenly I'll just get this feeling like something's gonna happen, and then it does. Wow. Well, but 
every time I think that maybe that was the last time, you know, but after today with, with Paulina, you know, I'm, I'm really, really glad that the last time wasn't the last time. Yeah. I was gonna crack a few jokes, but... Oh, no, no, <laughs> I've heard them all, trust me. Oh, Remy, why don't, why don't you tell me the lottery numbers and I'll split the winnings with you? It just, it doesn't work like that. It's all really deep, having this power. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Did you always, like, have this... Oh, y <laughs> you mean, was I born a freak? I never said that. Yeah, I wait, 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 you haven't heard how it happened yet. Don't laugh, okay? I wasn't. All right. I was struck by lightning. Can't that kill you? Well, it didn't kill me. And it, it just, it made me like I am. You think I'm insane, don't you? No, I, I got an open mind. I can... <laughs> uh, but it's weird, because I, I never know when I'm going to get a charge. A charge? Yeah, a charge, you know, like electricity. So wild. Yeah. <laughs> That night when you were reading fortunes for me and Sophia, did you get a charge then? Because your prediction came true, I have met an interesting new person. <gasps> Is it happening now? I'm getting a message. <gasps> it's about Felicia. I'll call her. She's still at Carlina. No, wait. Felicia's going to fire me. Yeah, if I don't get a hang of that stupid typing program that you got me. Thank you for the veggie burger. You're welcome. And, Nick, thank you for not running the other way when you found out. I'll see you soon. Bye. Is that your ESP talking? Mm -hmm. It's my wish. You are a surprising girl. Oh, honey, I'm just getting started. What does that mean? Go. <laughs> so just look over the prenup and let me know what you want to do. All right. Thank you, Carla. All right. So in the meantime. Oh, uh, Claudia, would you tell Helen that I'd like some tea in the living room? Oh, and some of those little sandwiches with the crust cut off. Oh, I, I just ordered tea. I heard. Tyrone, will you join us? Oh, no, I have an appointment. Oh, I've been meaning to tell you. I, I think I should uh, give you all my legal work. Since Matt and I are going to be married, we should just keep it all in the family. You know, I don't think that'd be advisable. Oh, well, you're going to learn that I don't take no for an answer. Isn't that right, sweetheart? <laughs> Matt, I'll be in touch with you, OK? All right, thanks. That was a little bit rude, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, not everybody falls for your southern charm, sugar. Matt, it's a little bit dark in here, isn't it? You know, I just came from seeing Cass, and he just told me the silliest thing. What's that? Well, he said your family didn't have any money. That's not true, is it? What do you think? I don't know why I even asked, you know? <laughs> oh, look at this. I have always wanted to play the piano. You know what? Maybe after the baby's born, I'll take lessons. Oh, you know what I should do? I should take one of those art classes so I know what we're bidding on when we go to the New York auctions. I mean, you know, not that money means anything to me one way or the other. I understand. Uh, but it does matter what it'll do for our baby. Well, our baby will get everything it deserves and needs, just like you. It's only fair. Now, if you'd excuse me, So my question is, what are we going to do if this place got to close down? 
I guess we're gonna have to live on love. Hey. <laughs> well, the main thing is we're covered. We'll have to close up, though, until we can get this place back up to code. I'm gonna really have to go cold turkey on this coffee. All right, I'll notify the staff. Oh, man, Remy, she is counting on her ships to pay rent. Good, Nick, Nick, is Remy okay? Yeah, she's just typing away. Hey, you tell her I want to thank her personally for getting Paulina out of there. I was really lucky. You know, and I had a feeling that Remy was going to bring us luck. So how long did it take you? You lost me. To help Remy with the typing. You're onto that, huh? You don't have to worry. I'm not going to fire her. But I'd like you to be really straight with me. How bad is she? Really? She's learning, Felicia. But she'll catch on real fast. nice to see where Carl came from, but it would have been much nicer to do it with him. We never got around to it. Thanks. It's a shame you couldn't learn more about his people. All the twins will have is a few photographs, his poetry books, and some odds and ends that I brought back with me, which I would like for you to keep in your safe until they're old enough. Well, that's my first stop once I get sprung. Why? A few things that I need to check up on. By the way, thank you for the postcard. Charlie's a... A burgeoning philatelist. She's mad for exotic stamps. Did you see the crest? Yeah, Amanda and I both noticed it. It's the Hutchins family crest. It's disabled Detective Sinclair. Check. Step two. Never forget. I won't, Carl. Neither will the quarries when I get through with them. Cameron. Tell me who you are. Good thing going there for a while, Sinclair. Mostly we were lousy, Cameron. You bought my story, went to bat for me. Meant a lot. You'll be all right. Sure. Sure. But I think you're gonna miss me. Hey. Come here. Yeah. 